What's up guys, it's Michael here and welcome to Fudge Muppet. Today I'm pumped to share with you our latest remastered build and this one is quite challenging yet very rewarding. This is the Shadowfoot, our pacifist build. The Shadowfoot is a trained illusionist, so skilled that he can infiltrate the minds of Telvani wizards and sneak past the keenest Khajiit eyes. The Shadowfoot is so confident in his elusive abilities that he sees no reason to kill, except in the most dire of circumstances. He is mostly motivated by the challenge and the fun of stealing, and also by the money he gains by selling the most valuable possessions of his victims. If he can waltz past anyone under the guise of an invisibility spell, why would he ever need to spill blood? If he finds himself in trouble, the click of a finger will have all of his enemies tearing themselves to pieces, or more often, calming down completely, smiling and waving as the Shadowfoot walks out with their prized item. However, in Skyrim, sometimes you have no choice but to kill, and for that reason, in this build will actually make sure to carry a variety and good amount of magical scrolls. Now let's get into the build, but don't forget that timestamps can be found in the description to help you navigate throughout the video. Let's start off with the Shadowfoot's race, standing stone and stats. The Shadowfoot is a dark elf and that means he can call on his ancestor's wrath once per day for 60 seconds to spawn a cloak of flames around him, damaging his enemies for 8 points per second. He also has a 50% resistance to fire. He's done my blood grants him a plus 5 boost to illusion and sneak too, and they'll both help out a lot with this build. Early in the game, the lover or thief stone are the best choices. The lover will give you an even spread of XP to all your skills, while the thief is a more efficient way to develop the majority of your skills faster. After that, take the Atronarch stone for protection against aggressive mages, as you won't have many other sources of magic resistance. You get 50% spell absorption, and also 50 extra points of magicka, which will help a lot. Now, the Shadowfoot stat spread will be 60% Magicka for all of your invisibility, pacify, and frenzy casting, and then 40% health to keep you alive in the event that you're caught between a rock and a hard place. Now, stealth is key for this build, so there's really no need for stamina investment. You can roll around heaps with base stamina. Also, your enchantments and one of your pickpocket perks will help keep you covered for carrying capacity. The Shadowfoot was born on the streets of Morrowind's capital city, Blacklight. He was one of countless orphan children living like parasites in the alleyways between the giant chitinous bug shells the city used for architecture. Standard practice for the many young homeless dark elves involved rummaging through bins for food scraps and extending a humble hand to wealthy passers-by. The odd bit of food or coin was enough to scrape by, but the shadow foot grew to be far more ambitious, so naturally he turned to thievery. He noticed that living on the streets was a competitive lifestyle. It was survival of the fittest when many homeless Dunmo were competing for the same fleeting resources. As a result, the shadow foot took a different approach. One day, while skulking the markets, he noticed a high elf magician performing multiple feats of illusion magic and trickery to an audience of intrigued onlookers. He would then proceed to sell various products and enchanted items that could help anyone become a master magician. The Shadowfoot had to have this. It was bound to help him steal all the food he would ever need. He slipped behind the makeshift stage and began rummaging undetected in the box of rings and the so-called magical items. He nicked the ring that supposedly would turn someone invisible. He sneaked away while everyone was still distracted by the performance. An hour later, he sat in an alleyway trying to get the ring to work, disappointed that he could still see his reflection in the puddle. It was a fake, but in the wake of disappointment, the Shadowfoot got an idea. The Shadowfoot waited in the market, watching the High Elf Magician con the various shoppers throughout the day, but he would not approach him until he was packing up his stall. The young Shadowfoot walked straight up to the High Elf and called him a cheat straight to his face, and then threatened to tell the guards of his scheme unless he taught the Shadowfoot all of the magic tricks he knew. The High Elf threatened back to tell the guard of the Shadowfoot's thievery, however the Shadowfoot made the point that he was small and could slip away. He was a simple street urchin, but if the High Elf wanted to maintain his scheme, he wouldn't be able to do so while wanted by the law. So the High Elf reluctantly agreed and spent the next few months teaching him all he knew. They even became friends for a time. They began running schemes, using their individual talents to win together, but soon the Shadowfoot out grew the partnership and began taking on far more ambitious and bountiful jobs. Soon his name was being whispered throughout Blacklight, and before long, contractors and opportunists everywhere were seeking the elusive youth out. One of many to find him was a shifty looking dark elf. He offered the Shadowfoot a huge stack of gold in return for his help in stealing an artifact from a Telvani stronghold. The Shadowfoot accepted, his eyes glistening in the molten reflection of the pile of gold as the elf opened the sack to reveal its contents. The elf 
Ralph offered him a well-crafted dagger with a razor-sharp edge as a sign of goodwill. That might fetch a high price, he thought. The stronghold was found in the mountains past the outskirts of the city. It looked like your typical mountainous terrain until the empty slopes found themselves connecting to a mess of thick roots and branches which emerged to form a giant mushroom tower. Inside, behind the watchful eyes of a clan of Telvanni mages, far more skilled in magic than himself, was a supposedly beautiful artifact. The Shadowfoot had no interest in learning more about the treasure. His mind was full only of gold. His employer seemed to think that he'd be waltzing in the front door, sharpshooting masterful mages with perfectly aimed firebolts, like some kind of prophetic prodigy. To that, the Shadowfoot could only laugh. He saw no reason to kill or to put his life in heavy danger for that matter. Instead, the Shadowfoot found a high-reaching branch and began his careful ascent. He climbed it to the top until he was high above the ground. The Shadowfoot removed the gifted dagger from his belt and began carving at the fungal structure. Once he had cut a hole big enough for his frame, he put the dagger away, not bothering to keep it close at hand. From this vantage point, he could see all of the mages and he was conveniently just above the artifact. He he climbed down the inner wall of the tower and lifted the treasure with ease. Simple. He tied it to his belt and got ready to climb back up again. Stop! A deep voice bellowed. The Telvani all turned at once, readying spells in each hand. Before any of them could act, the Shadowfoot sent a ball of blue-green aura flying at them. It collided with the ground between them, and the bright glow engulfed the group. When the haze dispersed, the Telvani all stood calmly, smiling and offering their greetings to the Shadowfoot. That pacify spell should last about 30 seconds, he thought. I'd better get moving. And so the Shadowfoot left the tower through the front door. Using his method of entry to leave would have taken far too long. Now, if his employer had looked amazed when they first met, he didn't know how to define the way he looked now. That reputation never left the Shadowfoot, and there was never a week when someone wasn't approaching him with a sack of gold and a big idea. As soon as he had a very hefty amount of gold stocked up, he decided it was time to leave Blacklight. Perhaps his skills would be better used elsewhere, somewhere with far more conflict and far more people who would desire his skill set. So he headed west, towards Civil War-torn Skyrim, only he was caught on the border by an Imperial patrol, where they confiscated his hard-earned money and threw him in the back of a cart bound for Helgen. After escaping Helgen, the Shadowfoot will work on re-establishing himself as the best thief around. He will need to build up his riches from scratch, so that means taking on as many jobs as possible. If someone needs something stolen or if there's a legendary artifact buried deep in some ancient barrow, the Shadowfoot will take the job. However, despite the trying times, he won't change his approach to work. He will avoid killing people whenever possible as he has faith in his magic and stealth abilities. He'd rather remain on unseen or get inside the mind of his targets, manipulating them to help him or stay out of his way, then kill them like some feral beast. His understanding of illusion magic and how best to bend the will of those around him makes him quite the charming scoundrel as far as thieves go. He's capable of stealing your heart and then your jewelry. He's in it for the money, with no intention of returning to a life on the streets, sleeping on uneven flagstones, and very importantly, he's in it for the fun. Now while he's averse to killing people, he's far from a peace-pushing hippie. It's not a case of him having some strict moral monk code either. He just can't justify gratuitous violence. That said, if some persistent bandit really desperately wants to kill the Shadowfoot to the point of inconveniencing him, he may be inclined to take them down. And if we're talking about the undead, then he's got hazy beliefs here. It's hardly murder when the thing is already dead and only attacking you under the influence of some sinister spell. So for this reason, factions like the Dawnguard aren't completely off the table, but remember, you aren't exactly the best at killing things, which is why Frenzy is one way to do it, or using scrolls, which you can find and will need to buy in case of emergency. As for other factions, if you're going to roleplay a pacifist, your options are a bit limited, but the Thieves Guild is the obvious main pick. This guild will be the second home of the Shadowfoot. Remember, if you're forced to kill people, you can, and you will be. Now, the College of Winterhold works too, as the Shadowfoot won't be able to keep himself away from all of the illusion magic knowledge available at the institution. The Bard's College is also an option to hone the Shadowfoot's silver tongue. Role playing this build properly makes the main story a bit difficult, but if you want to become the Dragonborn and you can find a suitable reason to justify it, then feel free. Killing dragons as the Shadowfoot will break immersion from the character's personality, but maybe the call of prophecy is strong enough to change his ways. That's up to you. The same applies for the Dawnguard, but as we said earlier, killing undead is considerably easier to justify. It is possible to simply sneak past everything except for a few major characters, 
characters pacifying and frenzying in the Dawnguard DLC, but it will be quite a challenge. Another somewhat immersion breaking option is actually joining the vampires to get insanely good sneak buffs, but in order to get that to work, the Shadowfoot would have to take a very dark turn, leaving much of the initial role playing behind. If you do the main story, the Dragonborn DLC is pretty much more of the same. You can make it work with the pacifist playstyle, but it's tricky. We only recommend that for very experienced stealth players. In a nutshell, this build is mainly a thief, so stick to that for the most fun possible. With the Shadowfoot's backstory, role playing, and factions explained, let's take a look at how that'll affect his skills, spells, perks, and overall playstyle. The Shadowfoot's primary skills are illusion, enchanting, sneak, lockpicking, pickpocket, and speech. As a pacifist, having a plethora of spells to pull from your hat is pretty important here. These are some spells to focus on, but overall, we can't say it hurts to get your hands on every illusion spell you possibly can. So, Muffle and Invisibility are great choices for sneaking around, while Frenzy and Pacify are your best options for dealing with hostiles. Beyond that, feel free to implement the many other illusion spells however you see fit. You will also have scrolls to use in case of emergency, almost always for summoning different Atronarchs. With that said, let's jump into the Shadowfoot's essential perks. The Shadowfoot is so devoted to the art of illusion magic that he ignored his groaning stomach and lethargic limbs to focus on learning from the High Elf Conman, or Conmer, really. Your magic skills will continue to be honed in Skyrim, so from the illusion skill tree, take everything except for Master Illusion. Master of the Mind is an important perk here, as you need coverage from all types of enemies when you're playing a pacifist. Master of the Mind allows you to cast illusion spells on Undead, Daedra, and Automatons. Next up, we have the Shadowfoot's other mage skill, and that is is enchanting. As an expert thief, staying super quiet when sneaking is essential, as is always being able to cast illusion magic. Therefore, the ability to apply arcane enhancements to the many sets of jewelry he steals in his travels is very helpful. What good is a beautiful diamond necklace if the person you're sneaking past can hear it clinking against your chest? From the enchanting skill tree, go for the middle branch up to and including extra effect. You'll almost exclusively be using skill enchantments for illusion and sneak, so insightful enchanter, which improves skill enchantments enchantments by 25% is a handy choice. Next, we have Sneak. As a dark elf who prefers to avoid bloodshed, there is even more pressure on him to avoid getting caught. He's known that since he was a small child. From the Sneak skill tree, follow the left branch all the way around to Shadow Warrior. Shadow Warrior is probably the most significant perk here. If you happen to get spotted and don't have the magicka to cast a spell, this perk gives you a chance to refresh and reset. If you leave your enemy's sight lines and crouch, you'll go temporarily invisible and they'll start searching for your whereabouts again. Our next two skills are staples of the thief, and without these, you won't be getting nearly as much valuable loot. The first is lock picking. From this skill tree, follow the main branch to expert locks, and then take the branch going left up to unbreakable. With these perks, you'll never run out of picks, and you won't have much trouble with even the hardest of locks. The second skill is pickpocket. In the same vein as lock picking, this will help you get the most sought after treasures. If your wealthy target doesn't have their prized possession locked in a store box, they probably have it on their person, so the shadow foot covers all the bases with his dexterous hands. From the pickpocking skill tree, take everything except for poisoned and key master. Perfect touch is a great one for the Shadowfoot if he sees a wealthy lord or lady wearing some shiny jewels. Perfect touch lets you pickpocket equipped items. Don't ask how he manages it without getting caught. Our final skill revolves around the Shadowfoot's silver tongue. Acquiring valuables is all good and well, but goods are only as valuable as the price they fetch. Now from the speech skill tree, we suggest taking the entire left branch with the investor fence perk combo, you'll be able to pass off all of your stolen goods right under the noses of the guards. With Investor, you can put 500 gold into a merchant to permanently increase their available gold, and with Fence, you can sell stolen goods to any merchant you've invested in, but oftentimes the perk can let you sell stolen goods to merchants you haven't even invested in. Now that you know the specific spells, skills, and perks that go into this build, let's quickly talk about playstyle. Now if you can't already tell, there isn't too much to explain other than the fact that the Shadowfoot is a pacifist first and foremost. You'll want to use Muffle and Invisibility to sneak past most hostiles, taking the important loot and getting out untouched. But if you need to get into a fight or happen to get caught, switch to Pacify or Frenzy to deal with them. If you want to or need to kill someone, you can collect Scrolls of Conjuration or even Destruction as a makeshift solution, but that's very much a worst case scenario. The Shadowfoot will wear a full set of Blackguard armor with an enchanted ring and necklace of your choice. The enchantments you'll want to use are Fortify Illusion and Fortify Sneak. Before you get the Blackguard armor, the regular Thieves Guild armor will work just fine, and also all of this stuff is already enchanted with bonuses that every thief will enjoy. Lastly, collect and buy a ton of scrolls for those unavoidable conflicts, which pop up throughout various faction storylines, even in the
in the Thieves Guild, it really helps to have an Atronarch at hand. Subscribe to Fudge Muppet and give the video a like if you enjoyed it guys. This has been our new remastered build, the Shadowfoot. Be sure to check out the timestamps in the description for all navigation needs and also click the links to our social media accounts where you can follow and keep up with everything Fudge. As always, thanks so much for watching guys. I've been Michael and I look forward to nerding out with you again very soon.